Christ is risen. We welcome you to our live stream in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Good Shepherd. A special welcome to those who may not be members of Holy Spirit but are watching us online. We hope that you will one day be able to join us in person after all of this is over. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Pastor Nathan Allen, and off-camera is Pastor Cassie Todd and our music director, Frank Pitts. If any of you have a prayer concern, please share that with us by sending it via email to prayer at holyspiritlc.net. As always, we continue to thank you for your ongoing financial support. You can make donations online or by mailing checks directly to the church. If you uh, missed Thrivent Financial's Managing Money in a Crisis webinar, uh, there is still a way to get that information. Just contact the church office and we can put you in touch with Dave and Karen who can give you that presentation. For those who have been inquiring, we are planning on having our May 16th food distribution. We are still working out some of the finer details, but there may now also be a few volunteers needed later in the afternoon or evening of Friday, May 15th to help prepare for the distribution. Check back with the church office if you are able to help on either the 15th Friday or the 16th Saturday for that food distribution. This week we will continue to hold hold an evening prayer on Wednesdays at 7, and we hope that you can join us on Facebook Live for that. Finally, parents of confirmands know that there is no confirmation class this evening, but we will be sending out information about, about a shorter class we are planning on having on Saturday, May 9th, in the afternoon, so that it would not conflict with all of you confirmands celebrating and cooking and cleaning and preparing for your moms on Mother's Day the 10th. I invite you all to prepare your hearts as we begin with confession and forgiveness. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God who chose us in Christ. 
Let us come to the fountain of mercy. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the tomb, you destroyed the power of sin and death. Hear us as we confess our failure to live the good news of the resurrection. Grant us the radiant power of your grace. Forgive us, heal us, and renew us, so that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. In great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In obedience to our Lord's command, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Love us still. 
Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, loved us still. Good morning, children. I have with me a picture of the fence that goes around my backyard. You see, this is the front of the fence where the gate is, and this gate my husband actually made for us for our home. Now, I have a silly question for you. If I was in my front yard and I wanted to get in my backyard in the fenced-in area, how should I get there? What should I do? Well, I guess I could run in through the house, but that would take a little bit of time. You know, I think I think I could actually try to climb over the fence too, but I might get a splinter. Dig under? You think I could dig under the fence? Uh, that'd be a little dirty. I'm not sure my husband would be too happy about that. Well, you know, the simplest way to get in would be to go through the gate. In our scripture today, Jesus says that he is the gate. That is, to get to know God, to be with God, the easiest way is to go through Jesus. You know, when you're spending time with Jesus in prayer, when you are learning more and more about Jesus as you study your Bible, you're actually spending more and more time with God because Jesus is God. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I have a challenge for you this week. I challenge you to find time, more time with Jesus, whether that means you pray more this week or maybe you open up your Bible with your family and learn something new about Jesus? Find some more time to spend with Jesus because when you are spending more time with Jesus, you're actually spending more time with God. Let's pray about that. Lord, thank you for being the gate, being the way that we can be with God. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to spend more time with you so we can spend more time with God. In your name we pray. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, and awe and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God 
and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack I lack nothing. He makes me lie down. 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 He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths. For his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of Even though even though even though the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Prepare a table in the presence of my. My enemies. You anoint my head with. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will pursue me all the days of my life.
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. makes me lie down dwell in the house of the Lord forever The Holy Gospel according to the 10th chapter of John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. While today is often called Good Shepherd Sunday, I looked at today's text and noticed that there is another theme running through them. The theme of being at home and sitting around a table. And yes, I happen to notice that theme, sitting at home with the rest of my family at my kitchen table as we were all doing our work and our homework. Our Acts text for today is about the early church, and the emphasis is on fellowship, that Christians are to share all that we have with one another and the poor, and that we are to break bread together with gladness and joy in our homes. This, Luke suggests, is how Christians are supposed to live. And in perhaps one of the most comforting passages in all of Scripture, David says in Psalm 23 that the Lord prepares a table before him in the presence of his enemies. And he prays that he will be able to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in our gospel text, Jesus describes himself as both a shepherd and a gate a door of swords through which the sheep, that is all of us, are to be shepherded home. It's not just these texts. A closer look at Scripture suggests home and the table are often connected. And whether we like it or not, as we find ourselves safer at home, I think these texts speak important words of comfort and promise to us. Robert Frost famously wrote that home is that place where they have to take you in, 
Home is wherever we feel like we belong. It's where we feel safe, welcoming friends and family around a table and eating together with glad and generous hearts, as Acts 2 reminds us. However, as the quarantine has also reminded us, life around the table is not always so ideal and functional. In fact, two chapters later in Acts, the very next time, in fact, that we see the disciples gathered in someone's home, a typical family fight breaks out. Ananias and Sapphira, two Christian converts, sell a parcel of land, and instead of laying all of the proceeds at the apostles' feet, they keep some back and then lie to the apostles about it. Then an argument erupts at the table, and the consequences of this are not at all pleasant. Now, our circumstances today are certainly different But maybe in this time of staying at home, we should also take a look at all of the ways that we make our household tables something other than a place where we gather with glad and generous hearts to give thanks to God. Ask yourself, how often do I replace giving thanks to God for food and family and fellowship at this table with things like conflict and self-centeredness and misunderstanding. Because as Jesus reminds us in today's gospel, he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. And as Psalm 23 alludes to, that abundant life, begins at the tables that the Lord prepares for us. So maybe the good news for us today, even as we find ourselves staying home, stuck in our sheepfolds, as it were, sitting at our kitchen tables, is that that is right where we need to be to begin to live into the abundant life that Jesus promises us. Notice that Jesus doesn't define what abundant life is. And I think that's intentional, because so often abundant life depends on the situations that we find ourselves in. Still, Jesus gives us some pretty strong clues as to what it looks like, because these words from Jesus come right after he heals a man born blind. A story we heard a few weeks ago from John chapter 9 at the end of Lent. This man who would have been completely dependent upon his family and neighbors to care for him. This man whom others had wondered aloud who sinned that he was born blind. This man who would have been on the margins of his community. This man is given new life through his gift of sight. For him, abundant life looks like being restored to community. It looks like being able to earn a living again and seeing the faces of those who love him. And even though we are not physically blind like this man, that reminder of being restored together as community of being able to return to work or at least a more normal work routine and being together with others whom we have not been able to see. Well, that sounds like a glimpse of abundant life that we can all relate to. So I pray in this time of staying at home, of taking care of ourselves and our families, that it gives each of us pause at our tables, a chance to reevaluate what's important in life and what living abundant life really looks like. I hope that doesn't look like the things that we can buy or the places that we can go, but rather that it looks a lot more like time spent with our families Prayers said for the safety of our health care and frontline workers, and ultimately, 
an enduring sense that a life well lived is about more than things and experiences. That doesn't mean that abundant life in Christ will always lead us to warm and fuzzy places where everything goes our way and there is nothing that we have to worry about. Even as sheep are protected by our shepherd, we cannot ignore the thieves and the bandits. We cannot become blind and deaf to the pain and suffering in the world. We cannot ignore these things because they touch all of our lives, no matter how hard we try to avoid them. So the abundant life that Christ promises us is not a cure-all. It doesn't mean that there won't be any spilled milk on our kitchen tables or arguments at them. Nor does it allow us to withdraw from the world. Instead, it gives us the power to face it. And all the enemies around us, both the visible and the microscopic ones, with hope and grace. Indeed, we have a responsibility to share these gifts of abundant life with the world. So even from your homes, I encourage you to find ways to share that hope with those around you. Point out to friends and neighbors, to families and acquaintances where you see God active in this world, where abundant life is bubbling up around you, where hope lives even in these darkest of days. And if you think that it is simply an impossible thing to do, starting at your dinner table, well then remember the story that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all share at the end of Jesus' life when he gathered his closest friends for supper. Remember that that was not a perfect evening. Friends who professed to love one another were torn by jealousy and betrayal. The future looked bleak. Spilled milk was everywhere. But after the meal, Jesus, who in just a couple of days would give up his life for them and for us, got down on his knees took out a towel, and began to clean up the mess. Because while thieves come only to steal and kill and destroy, he came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. my shepherd I'll not want he makes me lie in pastures green he leads me by the still still waters his goodness restores my soul he guides my ways in righteousness And he anoints my head with oil And my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delight And though I walk the darkest path I will not fear the evil one for you are with me and your rod and staff see the comfort I need to know and I will
will trust in you alone and I will trust in you alone for your endless mercy follows me your goodness will Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in prayer for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, universities, and seminaries, including Mott Community College, Baker, U of M Flint, Kettering, and Oakland Universities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering, especially those who we name before you, now either on our hearts or on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless the work of food pantries, including the food bank of Eastern Michigan and Forgotten Harvest, and the ministries and those who serve in our congregation, including Scott, Erica, and Faith Haddon, Steve, Diana, Nick, and Wyatt Halstead, Sean and Nicole Hamilton, Julie Hargrove, and Bill Foster. May none of our neighbors go without basic needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives, a faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and and the the glory, glory, forever and and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your sadness into joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.